Has anyone ever tried to, say, use a voltage divider to regulate the voltage? Let's say you need 2.5 volts and you have a 5 volt battery. How would you go about getting 2.5 volts to drive some other processor? Well, you could use a voltage divider, right? But what's the problem with using a voltage divider? Well, it's a function of the voltage divider, right? If the resistance changes, guess what happens to your voltage? Goes down, goes up, changes. So the idea of this circuit is we want to say, I want a target voltage. Some voltage, say 0.5 volts, which you're going to specify over RS232. In the last lab, we looked at uh, transmitting characters, right? Now, this lab, we're going to look at receiving characters how to receive information from hyperterminal, how to do something with that information. So over hyperterminal, you're going to send that you want a particular voltage, say uh, 0.5. From there, your goal is, is to get the output voltage equal to 0.5. And you're going to implement a control loop, which I don't want to go into too deeply into the theory of how this works. Uh, I actually provided you the code, or at least the fundamental idea of what you need to do in code so you don't have to worry about understanding necessarily the theory, but hopefully you'll be able to get some observations and sort of see what's going on. And the idea is, is uh, we take what our output voltage is and we compare it to what the voltage we want, and depending on the difference, we call that difference an error. It means I've got to change this by a certain amount in order to uh, make my output look like my target input I want. And we can do funny things to our uh, error, we can multiply, we can assume there's some dynamics to the system, but fundamentally this represents the potentiometer, this represents some term that's inside the microprocessor that you'll specify over RS-232, so you'll set this value, and you'll set this value over RS-232, and hopefully your output should look like your input. <coughs> what do I mean by that? Well, in this particular example, because I don't want to run serial up here, I have it so I can control these things separately, but so let's say I have my potentiometer at some value here. We'll say that this graphically represents from 0 volts all the way up to 3.3 volts. So everyone sort of see how the screen is, is scaling. It's, it's turning a real voltage into using the, uh, the ADC to convert it into some digital representation and plotting it on the screen. You're going to be using that with the set pixel command. So hopefully you have some familiarity about how to do this. So we'll say that this is, say, 0.2 volts, and I'm setting the target voltage here. So that's this voltage with this knob. In your uh, lab, you're going to be doing it over RS-232, but for purposes of the board. Okay. So the idea is, is when I adjust this, so here I'm adjusting this, it should try to go down to that voltage, and again, you're working with a limited power supply rail, so... So it goes up and it attempts to adjust this. So we can see it reacts kind of quickly. I change it up and it goes back down. Tries to compensate back down. So the idea is this voltage right here is actually the voltage that I specified 2.5 or what have you. Now some interesting things happen. If I change the value of K, really large, notice what's happening. It's starting to go back and forth right here. What, what do you think this is? It's oscillating. So what does that imply? That means it overshoots. It tries to make the voltage uh, go to 0 0.2 volts, but then it ends up going to 1 volt. And then it says, oh, that's too high. Now you can go down low, and it goes back down to, say, 0.1 volts. And it just comes <coughs> back and forth. But, so hopefully you can play around with these parameters and sort of see how changing different things in the control loop sort of plays with it. But hopefully when you get done with this, you'll know how to make a little oscilloscope out of this. And you can see it's a neat little thing. And I have a, a, a write-up on it. So let's see. So any questions on that? I do recommend you get started on it. The UART can give you some trouble. So, hopefully, I've got that figured out. But if not, I'll be in the lab all for the remainder of this week, next week. So, and again, when you're developing embedded systems, what do you do? You 
build all the code right, and you throw it in the compiler, and you try and debug everything at one time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Smack yeah. you. All right. So if you uh, did, I do that in film. Sorry. Uh, again, do a little bit at a time. Understand how do I display something on the screen? Work on that. Get it to work correctly. Then work on RS two thirty two. How do I pull something in? Get that proven. Work on that. Then you can start working on the oscilloscope aspect of it using the input. In fact, uh, uh, you can do quite a bit of this lab without even having to do any soldering to begin with. All right. So start getting all the, the pieces together, and then you can start work on the other aspects of this. Uh, I believe they will need uh, a potentiometer from Eddie, correct? It will be a potentiometer for Eddie. Make sure you get one that's probably above 5K. You don't want to get something too small, so you're pulling lot of current on this board. And it is probably preferable to get something that's a little bit easier to, to twist your, with your hand versus with a uh, uh, with a screwdriver. So see if you can get some sort of hand, hand potentiometer. And I, knowing our supplies, we have tons of, tons of that, you know, we don't have the new stuff with, uh, that needs a small little itty bitty surface mount uh, uh, parts with screwdrivers. We got lots of this old stuff. So, uh, and again, you don't need to have this board to do it, but uh, that will require you to solder a couple of wires to your own board. By the way, if you are using one of uh, our department boards for these labs, you are not allowed to solder to it. Is anybody still using our departmental boards and borrowing them? <coughs> nope. Everybody went off and bought one? Okay. Any other general questions? Or are you all scared and you want to read about it first? Theoretically, it is out there. Let's see if it is out there. Ooh, it found the hardware. Yeah, it looks harder than it actually is. Is there a section for doing something fun on this? Maybe. Make a little man walking on the line. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Again, on the page, it is lab number three. Five. Three, five. Yeah, something like that. Oh, come on. All right, and uh, a lot of the detail in here uh, tells you how to wire things up and where to wire it up. Easy enough? Mm -hmm. Make sure you find a schematic for this. This actually is a manual that comes with the CD. It tells you all the pin maps, how everything's hooked up on this board. It makes it kind of easy. And again, this is uh, this gives you a little bit of bacon. Not bacon. Bacon. Bacon gives you bacon. <laughs> basic background of all this. It always comes down to bacon. In fact, everything is better with bacon, including lab number five. All right. So, uh, any other questions? None. All right. This is it for this. If you could. Uh,